Community Television. You're watching West Hartford Community Television. You're watching West Hartford Community Television. For the community, by the community. Hi guys, thanks for tuning in to Cameras Rolling. Happy November. Okay, November is the month after the month that us in New England feel like we live in a screensaver. So beautiful. <laughs> Every day is paradise. So now it's November. You know, the leaves are down. We're getting ready for Christmas. We're, you know, the holidays. Uh, you know, longer, um, longer evenings. It gets dark earlier. So what do we need? What do we need to get through the month? Uh, we need to laugh. Mm -hmm. We need to laugh, because that'll help us cope with everything that's going on, especially because the election will be over, so we will need to, like, release that energy. So, lucky, lucky, lucky you, I'm going to, I have people here tonight who are going to make you laugh. They're from a terrific company called CT Improvisational Comedy Theater. Right? That's the full name? Yeah, it's CT Comedy Theater. CT Comedy yeah, Theater. Yeah. Okay. And they are here tonight, and they are going to tell you about all the programs they have, all of the entertaining they do, and it is going to be fantastic. So, all right? Everybody, everybody ready? Wait. Say ready. 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 Okay. Slate, say your name, please. Greg. Last name. Oh, Ludovici. <laughs> Slam slating. All right. Greg okay. Ludovici. Okay. Slate. Your name? Allie Rivera. Your name? Tim Siebel. Okay, everybody. Set. Camera's rolling. It's my new intro. Oh, oh, I love it. Love it. Love it. Yeah. Yes, I did it. Yeah. yeah. What part of history. Riveting. Yeah, Riveting. Up. <laughs> so, all right, let's start. Now, you are the Greg. Yes. You so are the Greg. Yes. <laughs> Only the one. Yes, it is a Greg. Okay. Yeah. Um, what, what is your title again at CT? So um, I'm the artistic director of the theater. Okay. Um, and what uh, does that entail? So um, it entails overseeing the shows that we put on at the theater and the teams that perform at the theater. So. Um, I'm also one of the founding members of CT Improv, which is the, you know, the, the improv company that eventually grew into the theater. And so we went from being a, a single team of seven people back in, uh, we met in 2008, started performing together in 2009 with one show a month, and now um, we have 24 teams. Uh, over 60 performers. Wow, and you started with seven people. Seven people doing, yeah, just one show a month mm -hmm. at City Steam Brewery in their, uh, in their comedy club. Um, uh, so one Sunday night a month, and now we are doing shows every Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Two shows every night um, for, yeah, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday uh, with 24 teams plus a number of great uh, guest shows. We do a lot of improv, so every single weekend there's got to be something brand new that's never been seen before. Um, we also bring in some written sketch comedy, and uh, we have one stand-up night each month, and we also bring in some theatrical performances as well, as long as it's comedy. It's, right. it's, it's welcome at our theater. As long as it can make you laugh. Yes, mm -hmm. yes, because there are fantastic other theaters in Hartford, and we wanted to make sure that we were being you know, a, a good artistic uh, citizen and neighbor within, right. within the theater community in downtown Hartford. So, um, so yeah, we love telling people to go see those shows, too. And then there are still plenty of nights uh, left in, in, in the year to come see a new improv show every weekend, too. That adheres to one of my mottos. My motto is, there's plenty of room at the top. Isn't, <laughs> isn't that true? Yeah, mm -hmm. and, and also, my, my motto mm -hmm. is, it's never too late to go for your dreams. Mm -hmm. So, Ali, I'm sure that, that this is part in your dreams, being, oh, being a performer. Absolutely. This is, um, I became interested in improv comedy when I was about 26. 
um, which really isn't that late in life. You know, there, we have a lot of... <laughs> but it, it is late, though. Well, there are a lot yeah. of people in our company who started doing this in high school or in college. And, right. Um, you know, it was something that when I was around 26, I had moved to the Hartford area. I didn't really know anybody. Yeah. I didn't know the area well. Uh, so I took a class, actually, at CT Improv. That's how I originally got involved, was I took um, a class. And we offer a huge variety of classes for all different levels. And uh, doing so, I met so many new people. It opened me up to this huge community of improvisers and comedians all throughout the greater Hartford area. And uh, it brought me to these people who had a similar passion to what I love to do. And so now I have this great group of friends that I get to see and perform with all the time. Isn't that amazing? You know, because see, seeing you, you're, you're, you're still young, but you, you are part of the cases. It's never too late to go for your dreams. Oh, absolutely. Now, now when, you, when you took a class, was it, was it because it was something you wanted to do? Have you always liked to perform? Um, yeah, have I've, you always liked to make people laugh? Or was it a secret little, oh, I hope I can do it? <laughs> um, not quite. Mm -hmm. I've always been kind of... Uh, kind of... Chillax. Uh, yeah, and kind She's of, very chillax. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Uh, I've always kind of liked to ham it up in front of my family, and they were the ones who were like, you should try doing improv. But I didn't know anything about it at all, so I took uh, an intro class through CT and learned a little bit about it, and was like, this is really something I kind of want to explore more. Um, and so the thing that's great is for people like me who I, I was just passionate about it as soon as I started. I was able to go through all the different classes and learn about different techniques and really dive into it. Um, and then I have had other friends who I took that intro class with who were like, I like to do this as a recreational hobby. And they take some classes here and there. And it's just something they enjoy doing on the side. So mm -hmm. it's something really um, for anyone who, who wants to be able to do this. It's something that is accessible to everyone. OK, so speaking of accessible to everybody. Tim, you what, what? What is your title again? With uh, associate managing director of the theater. And, and and what what does that entail? Um, uh, anything that involves uh, cleaning up, uh, <laughs> uh, uh, mopping, a lot of mopping. Cleaning uh, ashtrays. No, no, it's, uh, <laughs> Uh, that's the operation side, so it's right. um, you know figuring out what uh, POS system to use. Um, it's uh, actually figuring out what beers to carry, what wine to carry, those sorts of things. Oh, I see. Um, yeah, I mean, and anything from like, um, I mean, small things like um, we've had speakers, but we, they haven't been installed yet. So I did that today, just in, you know, kind of a little, a little bit of everything. Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah when yeah. when you when you first told me about it, I I pictured you involved in like a teaching aspect. Oh, now, do, do you guys have classes? Yes. yes. Yeah. Okay. yeah, we have mm -hmm. a, a studio on Pratt Street, just one block from the theater mm -hmm. um, in, in downtown. Um, and uh, so uh, Summer El Gindi, one of the other founding members, is the education director. And so uh, we offer, a, uh, we're constantly offering a number of programs at different levels, as mm -hmm. Ali su suggested. There's uh, always at least one intro running uh, mm -hmm. so that people who are you know, a little bit unsure just want to give it a try. Um, it's, it's a low commitment, affordable four-week class where uh, we're not going to throw you on stage. Um, very supportive environment. Um, but then all the way up through performance level classes where um, the entire point of it is to study an artistic uh, long form improv uh, form and, uh, and then put that on the stage. For example, one of our most recent ones was improvised Tennessee Williams plays. So we had a, a team of very experienced improvisers right. study Tennessee Williams and then try to take the elements that you'd find from a Tennessee Williams play and get suggestions from the audience and craft that into a, a brand new play, never before seen. It was uh, over an hour in length and all made up truly instantly on the spot. It, oh. it, a magical thing. And that's so, so performance level students can do that. Yeah, that's incredible. Yeah. yeah. Wow. <laughs> okay, now I'm, I'm going to play realism over here. Sure. <laughs> okay. That seems like you need to be really clever, genius level. And that, just you telling me that, can be a little intimidating. Do you think that somebody can just go in because they've always loved? They, they've always loved to laugh. They, they, they love to watch these. That they can get to that level? Absolutely. Yes. Most of the yeah, people yeah. in that class are, that, are people who started in our intro class. Mm -hmm. A lot yeah. of them just started there and 
that is really inspirational. Wouldn't suggest that first thing you try. I right. Mean, that would be yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that, that's really <laughs> You can work your way up to something yeah. like that, yeah. I'd yeah. say. But I, I think one of the beautiful things about improv, and especially the, commu the improv community in Hartford, mm -hmm. is it's a very supportive place. So if that is something that you eventually want to get to, if you want to reach that level mm -hmm. in the art, um, you have so many people who are there to help you get there by you know teaching you different techniques they know or helping you to to practice to hone the craft to right, get there. Right. It's it's truly a, a community supportive community environment um, for anybody who wants to try it out. And really, what we say in intro class day one, we remind everybody this is a team sport. You are never going to be up there alone. Um, this you know stand up. Comedy is a different thing. Um, right. And so with improv, there are always at least two people on the stage. And um, our, our golden rule above all else, all other rules can be broken as long as it's to serve this rule is make your partner look good. So that's the golden rule. That's, that's, I like that. that's our golden rule. So if Allie's up there and she maybe she feels a little bit nervous, right. my entire job, I'm not worrying, am I funny? Am I, oh, I'm sorry. Right, I'm right, right. Um, am I funny? I am I good? I'm <laughs> it's more here tonight. <laughs> Um, I'm w just thinking, I need to make Allie seem like the most brilliant person in the world. Right. And if she's feeling good, then she'll, and she's making me feel like a brilliant person together, we're going to have a lot more fun, it's going to be a lot easier, and we're going to create art at a level that would be a lot harder if we were stuck in our heads and not listening to each other, not co truly working together as a team. <laughs> Well, do you know what I love about about improv? Because I'm I'm an actress Great. too. Great, yeah, yeah. I've, I've seen your masters <laughs> <your laughs> here. <Right. laughs> Very impressive. Yeah. Um, is that in this biz? It can so it can be so cutthroat. It's so competitive. Um, my my heart still gets broken with with people I've I've, I've trusted who secretly don't want me to do well because they think it's something taken away from them. Just, you, you guys know that. Yeah. This is an art form that's mag magnanimous. Mm -hmm. And I truly believe, and I've, I've learned from this show, that to be really happy is, is knowing how to make other people happy. It's getting completely out of yourself. And that's what I love about improv. Mm -hmm. yeah. I love that. Because unlike, like, like say, stand-up comics, where you know you, you want to kill and you get um, you know really in, in intimidated if the person before you does well and makes you nervous, you want everybody to do well. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's, Some, yeah. Yeah. Something that so we we also do sketch, we do stand up, but I think a lot of the the way a lot of us look at it is we're improvisers doing sketch, we're improvisers doing stand up. Mm -hmm. So right. we're we're trying to take all the lessons, all the good things about improv and translate them into different types of comedy. Right, so right, when we right. do stand-up, it's anybody who's there is uh, usually an improviser, improviser's friends or family who have seen improv, who are there to be a supportive audience, who are there to just want, want to see your specific comedy. And the stand-ups, uh, the improvisers who are doing stand-up, want to, want to see each other, want to say, like, that was hilarious. I, I'm jealous about how funny you are, but, like, in a good way. Yes, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. OK, so Tim, have, have you always liked to perform? Or? Um, I, uh, similar to Ali, in front of friends and family, but I didn't really do, uh, but I always loved comedy uh, um, growing up. And um, I, I was initially looking to do stand-up. I, uh, it's a very long story, but I, I quit my, I had a job, it was a well-paying job, and I was just kind of, the last year I was there, I was just kind of like, oh, this is the rest of my life. And I was only 25 at the time. I'm like, this is just it. Were this you it. in a cubicle too? I was not in a cubicle. Oh. No, I was, I was, in, I was managing uh, uh, a retail manager, but um, right. And it was just like, that's it. This is it. I had my best year ever. Got a great bonus. My boss was like, great, do it again. I'm like, what? No, I just did it. Um, <laughs> but then I, uh, so then I, I quit and tried to figure out what I wanted to do. And I, I found, I was looking for open mics. I was like, I want to do stand up. I've heard stand-ups just say, just just start doing it. I was like, okay, right, I want to do comedy, right. I'll try it. And I found, um, I was looking for an open mic, and I found CT's show at City Steam, and I just clicked on the website, and I was like, oh, they teach classes, like improv. I like that too. If I fail, other people would be better than me and make me look better anyways, so right. then that's fine. Um, and just started taking classes, and then slowly just did more and more classes, then auditions happened, and got into the group, and then just have kind of worked my way up to now be in charge of money and stuff. So, yeah. <laughs> 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 that's, you 
Yeah, yeah. people too. But yeah, most of them. It's important. Yeah. Yeah. Got to pay the rent. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Otherwise, we can't do our art. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But we, we are nomadic, though. So mm -hmm. you know the yeah, the, the yeah, rent talk thing. Talk is about how 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 you guys first started out. You you were just touring, and mm -hmm. now you're in what's what's the name of the theater again? So CT it's, Comedy no, Theater. No, but, oh. but isn't there a name of the building? Is it the Carriage House? Oh, we were. Oh, we used we to, were. Used to be Carriage there. House, mm -hmm. and now is there another name or? Oh no, we used to perform at Carriage oh, House. Yeah, yeah. Carriage we still house. do sometimes, but that's, right. that yeah. was before we had our own location. Oh, I yeah. see. I see. The okay. Hartfield Ensembles Carriage House Theater yes. is another um, great artistic venue in Hartford that we mm -hmm. still support. Um, but we used to do a lot of our. What we do, used to do a monthly show. We had there. a monthly Saturday show there. Mm -hmm. A monthly Friday show at um, the uh, studio at Billings Forge Community mm -hmm. Works, mm -hmm. uh, right by the Capitol. Um, and and then a monthly show at City Steam Brewery. And our MO since the start has been find empty places in Hartford and fill them. Fill them with audience, fill them with art, fill them with laughter. So it started, we were taking classes together at, um, at Hartford Stage Company, right. and, and then we'd go downstairs, it was Sunday night classes, and we went downstairs to City Steam, and we noticed there's a comedy club here, but it's, it's dark, it's empty, nobody's huh. yeah. using it. Uh, so we, we said, hey, give us a trial run. If we can fill your comedy club on a Sunday, will you let us keep doing sh shows here? And uh, so we started there, and then um, that was our first monthly show. Right. And then we were watching a, a friend's band perform at Firebox Restaurant, some of the best food in Hartford, I swear. Right. Um, <laughs> oh, it's yeah, so by Capital. And we were watching live music, and we look over at the studio, and it's Friday night, 8 p.m., and it's dark in there. We're like, We've got to fill that space. So we approached them and said, could we do a monthly Friday show here? And um, then when the Heartbeat Ensemble um, uh, took over the Carriage House Theater, uh, so they, they typically do scripted shows. They write their own shows. They're, they're fantastic. Um, but it takes a long time for them to get out into the community, interview the community, write the shows. Right. So we helped fill their dark nights. When they weren't doing a show, we would put on an improv show, um, you know, one Saturday night a month. And so we went from that one uh, show a month to, uh, you know, shows almost every weekend. And um, then we started adding the sketch, um, you know, with, with uh, sketch parody shows of, of films, things like that. Mm -hmm. And so eventually, through teaching classes and through putting on so many of these shows and, and building up, uh, you know, a, a, a trained uh, company of actors, we knew it was finally time to open a theater of our own um, and, and start putting on shows every weekend. Mm -hmm. Oh, I see. So now, yes, and now you're, you're, you're putting down the roots. Mm -hmm. Like, prior to that, when you said you were going into empty buildings, I, I was thinking you're like funny laughing squatters. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, <laughs> you know, I mean, but, but it's, but it's wonderful, but it's wonderful, yeah. it's wonderful yeah. because we need this so much. You mm -hmm. are filling a real, real void. Mm -hmm. I wish... I wish I wasn't so nervous. I may, maybe I will take a class. Well, come to an I, intro. We will take such good care of you. But yeah. I, it's <laughs> such it's, it's so supportive. supportive. Intro classes. I've I've taught a few of them now, and uh -huh. intro classes is a, a range of of people, and it's always so interesting to see. Um, for everything from age, from background, from um, just interest in comedy, or if they're just there to um, come out of their shell, or just mm -hmm. to learn a little bit more about public speaking, or just to find something to do on a Friday or Wednesday, whatever the the class night is, um, and to watch them kind of grow together and like realize, oh, we're all here for the same reason. Right. And now we can, and how, with all the different backgrounds, everybody connects and everybody, by like week three or four, is like really, their guards are down and, and they're really ready to kind of be silly in front of each other. Um, so you should definitely check one of those out. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and it's, well, yeah, because it's it's trusting. What, what were you going to say, Ali? Well, it's interesting to see the reasons that people do decide to take mm -hmm. improv classes. So they're, varied. They're so varied. And there are some people who, you know, they're like, I really want to do comedy. I have one good friend who he said, he's like, I've always been very structured, and I wanted to be able to loosen up and get out of my element. And he said to me, doing improv has, has just dropped all those walls and helped me to meet new people and put my guards down and you, right. know, you know as a person he says that it's made him better and it's it's fun to see how it's impacted so many people yeah we've we've worked with um, doctors working on their bedside manner uh, divorce lawyers working on more collaborative divorces social workers working on having difficult conversations with uh, you know with people who, who aren't ready to hear the truth Mm -hmm. um, it's it, yes, uh, improv can be used for comedy, but it, it's also at the end of the day, 
It's just guidelines on h how to help two people interact better together, <laughs> to listen better, mm -hmm. to uh, respond better to each other. So, um, so yeah, it, it's always so exciting, especially those intro classes when you realize yeah, all, that everybody in there is in there for a different reason. And especially in Connecticut, you know, there are always one or two people who want to go write for Saturday Night Live or, or um, you know, Stephen Colbert. And one of our founding members now does that. She now writes for, um, late for late, yeah, late yeah, with, uh, with Stephen Colbert, yeah. right? So if that's your dream, we want to support you and help you get there. But if right. you just want to be a better public speaker, we want to support you and help you get there. If you just mm -hmm. want to have fun and make friends, well, th there's a place for you, too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, you know, yeah, I really see it just helping so much in that area because, like, it's you, you need to really, really listen, and you, you need to really trust others, and it's, it, it's hard to get out of your own head. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, like, if you see an old, an, an ex, and you want to be all, all witty, and, and then the, the time passes, and you're like, I wish I would have said that. <laughs> so it's, it's almost like mental gymnastics as well. I yes. mean, you can really fine tune your, your, your skills and, and the way that you communicate. Right. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. It, it is, um, you know, people are always like, oh my gosh, you're so quick. Well, you know, I'm, I'm a, a, uh, naturally a very nervous introvert. <laughs> But I've been doing this for you know nine years, and like it, it, it is brain training. It's like lumosity in real life with real people. Uh, so or mad uh, mad lips, right? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh, certainly a lot of that. Where we let we let the audience fill in those blanks. Right. And, and yeah. 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 Well, I mean, as much as it's about people always say, how do you know what to say? Like, what? How do you come up with the things you're going to say? As much as it is about whatever you're going to say. It's just as much about listening to what's Absolutely. happening. Yeah. Um, you know, it's, it's really fine-tuning your listening skills and understanding what are the people around me saying? What are they feeling? Yes. And how would you react as an honest person to whatever that situation is? Yeah, so. yeah one of the first things we always have to do for, for people who come in thinking they're funny is actually oh, yeah. great to be funny. Yeah, because... Oh, yikes. <laughs> 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 So I, as, as the artistic director, I have, have a rule that I always tell my intro class, which I call it the blackout rule. Jokes have exactly one place in an improv scene. Anyone want to guess where that blackout. is? Blackout. Yes, the end, the blackout, <laughs> yes. So if you walk up there and you tell a joke, right. well, typically it's at the expense of the reality of the scene and everything else. The, the joke is for, and, and so if someone goes up there, they tell a joke, I say blackout and they're done, and then they don't get to play anymore, right? So. Um, but the, the reality is comedy, the most universal comedy, the comedy that we all relate to, right. comes from truth. It mm -hmm. is, you know, we watch satire and we're like, oh my gosh, that's hilarious because it's so true. Yeah. So we yeah. always, we try to teach people to just start in a very grounded, realistic scene, almost, re if we've got enough time, if we're doing a long form, it's going to be right. almost reminiscent of a, of a dramatic play. But because we're making this up on the spot, um, you know, naturally at some point someone's going to say something interesting or fun or unusual and that's what we grab onto because it's true but it's a little unusual and that becomes, uh, you know, the kind of the, 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 the kindling that becomes the comedy uh, and, and you earn that over time over the course of the play that you're doing. Mm -hmm. A lot of the a phrase we say a lot and a lot of people in the improv community say is it's life plus one. Mm -hmm. So it's not life plus 20, because it's very hard for people to get all the way up here. You can build to up here, but you want to start right. with a regular base reality. Um, I think one of the, one of the most interesting uh, uh, improv sets I've ever seen was just two guys um, having a conversation, basically, and it turned out they were two dads sitting on a bench waiting for their kids. Uh, but it was just a conversation between them. It was 30 minutes long, and I was, like, just in th I was really engaged. It was just them there. I mean, they were sitting and talking and it was great it was amazing and it was very different from who they are as people but it was just very interesting um, so even something as simple as that can, can be compelling yeah. right well in and also as as a performer isn't it just nice to get out of your head and stop being so self-conscious <laughs> mm -hmm. I mean to just let it go it's that I, I would think it'd be a real sense of freedom oh yeah absolutely right? I'd yes. say so I mean I feel like uh, when I'm doing improv you have the freedom to do silly things that you wouldn't normally do right. in real life. I mean, just the other day, I was doing a scene and it called for somebody to um, be a talking snake. And so I was just like, all right, just got down on the floor. And I was, <laughs> which real life, probably wouldn't do that very often. But, uh, I don't know if you got fired from that last <laughs> <time>. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. 
Oh my but, God. Uh, I mean, it's it's just one of those things that it was it was for the sake of making so that the person who was standing out there talking to this talking snake didn't look like they were crazy talking to air. Like I wanted to make sure they looked good, so I jumped out there, Wonderful. and uh, you know. And that's so important. If um, if everybody does something that, like, if one person's doing something, then the audience is sitting there thinking this is a little weird. But if everybody does it and they're sincerely having fun, all of a sudden it goes from being weird to being like bold, creative, mm -hmm. fun. Yeah. Uh, the, if they're having fun, the audience is going to have fun, and so it's that's why it's make your partner look good. Don't let him talk to an invisible snake. He's going to get self conscious. So Allie gets down there, she's a snake, all of a sudden they can have a, a they can quality yes, scene. They can relax. She's going to be a smart snake and it'll be interesting. You know? Yeah. Okay, so if um, we, we can go online and we can find all the information about the classes, about mm -hmm. your performances, everything? Yes, yes. Okay. So, um, yeah, the theater is at 15 Asylum Street in downtown Hartford, Connecticut, mm -hmm. um, right off of the, uh, the CT Fast Track bus, if you want, because we do serve alcohol. So, <laughs> um, we have a weekly family show every Sunday at 5 p.m. Bring the kids. Um, we, if they want, they can even get up on stage and play with us a, a little bit. They can do, do some improv scenes with us. That's always fun. Oh, I bet that's fun. Those yeah. are some of my favorite. Yeah. 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 The yeah. family because shows are probably. so pure. Yeah. 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 Um, the yeah. family shows are some of my favorite to do each yes. week just because. And the family show really came out of our touring company doing a lot of uh, birthday parties and, and things like that. So we do fundraisers, birthday parties, graduation parties, um, you know, because it's, it's customized comedy. Whatever right. you mm -hmm. want, we're going to put on the show that you want. We did a um, wedding recently. Yes, and it literally, <laughs> we married to the perfect. wedding. Perfect. Yeah. yeah. Julia oh, got fun. ordained, right? And yes, she actually she did the ceremony and everything was, imp it was, I wish I was there. I, hearing the stories about it, I was like, oh, I can't believe I wasn't there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's wonderful. Yeah. Well, so, I'm, I'm really looking forward to seeing the performance. I, yeah. I, I think I might check it out. Please. You should. To conquer one of my own fears, because that's, that's another thing I preach, so I need to follow what I preach. So, <laughs> so I will go ahead and check that out. Yeah, now we only we only have a few minutes left. Okay. So, um, yeah. I should recite the website and, and, <laughs> and, 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 yeah. and then we and will then, go from there. Yeah, and then and then okay. maybe we can yeah we can demonstrate website a little. Website address again. So, um, so we've been saying C T Improv all along, and I want to make sure that's it's clear. It's S E A T E A improv .com. C T. Yeah, it's a play on Connecticut. It mm -hmm. is. That, it's kind of fun. You know, we're on yeah. the ocean. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's, a, it's a little logo. Tea. Yes. Yep. Having tea. S E A T E A <laughs> improv .com. Uh, so yes, you can hire us for the touring company for uh, parties fundraisers, corporate training, um, you know, all of that. Mm -hmm. Or you can come see a show every single weekend at the theater. And if it's November, that means um, we have a, a Willy Wonka sketch parody show coming up. Um, uh, that one is uh, November 18th and 19th, 9 p.m. So that's Friday and Saturday. And then all um, in in December, we've got Improvised Christmas Carol going. So go see the Hartford stage version first, see the real thing, <laughs> right. and then come to our theater <laughs> and check out the improvised version, um, which is very Mad Libsy. It's a bit a little bit of sketch prov, so a little sketch, uh, a lot of improv, and that's uh, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, 8 p.m. and Sundays at 2 p.m. The middle two weekends of uh, December. So uh, plus then just improv all the rest of the month. So so a lot of, a lot of opportunities there. Wonderful. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. For for coming. Yeah. Thank you. Greg, Allie, and Tim. Greg, Allie, Tim. Yeah. <laughs> like that's us. Yeah. <laughs> Start a trio. Yeah. yeah. So, um, yeah, it, is there is there time to do yes. you know, one sample? Yes. One yeah. sample let's game. let's right. give it a go. All right. Hi again. We are uh, just three members of CT Improv, and so uh, earlier in our conversation, uh, uh, so Marcia said that she had said something that she wished that she could change. Uh, and so that inspired us to, uh, to select the improv game that we're going to do for you now. This is a short form improv, so uh, we're going to set uh, up some rules up front and then we're going to uh, perform within the constraints of those rules. There's also long form improv where uh, you know, maybe we're going to improvise just an entire musical over the course of 40 minutes. We only have five minutes, so <laughs> come to the theater if you want to see a 40 minute musical. <laughs> But for now, we're just going to do a, a game called Line Change, also known as Say What. So uh, the way this, uh, this is going to work is that Allie and Tim are going to be acting out a scene, but uh, at any point, I, as the host, can shout out, Say What? or Do What? At which point, whatever they have just said or just done, they're going to have to basically rewind and do it differently. 
right? So they get a second chance to say that thing they wished they had said differently. Or they've got to figure out something else to say, even though they wanted to say that first thing. <laughs> uh, so let's do a, a quick example here. Hey, uh, Allie, yes. uh, yeah, uh, what'd you have for breakfast this morning? I had a bowl of cereal. Say what? I had uh, Dunkin' Donuts coffee. Say what? I had cold pizza. Okay, you had cold pizza. That's the only truth. All those other things, including sponsored content. He's gonna bleep that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was not, maybe it's sponsored. Hey, call us if you want it sponsored. Um, so all we need. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's, um, so all we need from you, uh, in our, our wonderful audience, is uh, the suggestion, please. Of hey, let's get um, let's get a, a very uh, dangerous or exciting occupation. Um, a, a spy. Spy. Spy is your suggestion. Players, are you ready? Yes! Go! Hello? Hello. Didn't see me here, did you? I did not at first, no, but now that I've seen you there, I've noticed you. Ha-ha! Mm -hmm. Yes. Say what? Ho-ho-ho! Oh. Ha-ha! <laughs> Say what? <laughs> <laughs> Do you have the documents? Say what? Do you have the stuff? Say what? Did you, I forgot what I was supposed to bring. Say what? I have the recipes. <laughs> Finally, I'll be able to conquer this chocolate chip cup. Oh, 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 oh. Where's oh. the mic? Do what? Do what? Do what? Keep it within four different briefcases. I appreciate the <laughs> prepaid credit card. I <laughs> will use this. Is this one of the ones I have to call to activate? You or do, yes. There's a number on the back. You just give that a call. They will walk you through the, uh, the activation. You know, it's not very professional to do this. This is fine. Whatever. Just go ahead. Check, check the merch. I will keep an eye out. Do what? I will... Uh, Keep, keep an eye out. Do what? Okay, I'm gonna keep an eye out. <laughs> Two cups of butter. I knew there was something in there. Mm -hmm. Shh, shh. There's oh. ears everywhere, okay? Sorry. Just keep that to yourself. Now that is straight from Toll House. They don't give that to just everybody. The thing on the package, not the actual recipe. I knew oh, it! Yeah. It's actually really bad for people with allergies, but it's, yeah. It's gonna, there's a lot of just gluten and dairy. And Say what? There are just all types of plastics and- Say what? There is, that's not even food that goes in there. Oh, nope, that's fiberglass, actually. That, there's fiberglass, yeah. Same thing they put in some cigarettes. That's why it's so addictive. That's why! People thought it was nicotine. It's not, it's fiberglass. That's, what, that's what's addictive in cigarettes. Do what, Allie? Paper airplanes hold it best. And time! <laughs> All right, so just a brief example of the kind of improv that you'll see uh, that one at, at the family show doing short form improv at CT Comedy Theater. So, hope you'll check us out. Yay!